was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I I was always the one to find myself. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna show you how to build a twin bed. We're gonna use one by sixes, is the side of the side frames, and then we're gonna use four by four, and then one by four is for the support. So I'm gonna go through and make all my cuts first for the end boards. I'm gonna cut them at 30, cut at 39 and a half. The sideboards, I'm gonna cut at 74. And then the support boards across the middle, I'm gonna put nine of them and we're gonna cut those at 37 and three quarters. Also for the support, like for the legs, I'm gonna use four by fours and I'm gonna cut them at about 14 inches. These are gonna be your end support boards. So first I'm gonna cut these at 39 and a half inches, exactly. I was never the one to give up the ghost, no, I was so stuck. I kept on playing my part, wanted to give up cause nothing was changing. Now, I'm gonna mark three quarters of an inch off the end. I'm gonna cut these one by six by eight pieces at 74 inches. Yeah, you, you take on my lungs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me want to try forever. I feel so free, oh my sweet baby. Now, for the headboard, you guys, I've like debated on doing a few different things, but my brother found this at his job site. He found two of them for Simon and Cohen. And it actually is really sweet wood. Like it looks really good. It's in pretty good shape. And the wood that's on it is like, a, it looks like it's a pre-stained gray pine. So I'm actually gonna use that. I'm gonna sand it down a little bit, stain it, put it on the back to use it as a support. So this is already done. If you can find a good pallet and it's in good shape, it makes a pretty cool headboard. Now, this is where my four by fours are gonna go. I'm gonna mark them three inches down. So I leave a three quarters of an inch on the side for where the side boards are gonna go to. And then my four by four is gonna go three inches down from the top. So it's gonna sit right here across this and the four by four will come down like that. But you gotta leave that space here because the side boards. Okay guys, so I'm gonna line my four by four up like this. These are actually four by fours that I already had because I wanted to make this as cheap as possible. So I'm gonna line it up along that line and then along my three inches down and I'm gonna throw two screws in the back, back here and then maybe a couple pin nails. Make it extra strong. Time goes by, yeah, you and I are running out. Running out. Put this down just like that, line it up. It's perfect. I'm gonna screw these sides in for support on the side piece. You and I. You and I. So I'm measuring from the inside of each four by four. I read my course through a planer and these came off of an old bed that I made so I'm just reusing them so these are actually smaller than most 4x4s would be plus a 4x4 is really like three and a half inches so my measurements coming up to 67 and a quarter but I'm just gonna come and mark on the inside anyway you really don't have to measure I would just line them up take your pen and do your mark screw it from the outside in and from the inside out if you want it to really grab and cinch together, you're gonna have to start on the outside first because the two by three is bigger. So if you push through this way, it's gonna push the board out because this is a skinnier board. So start from this way, pinch it, push it in, but push screws on both sides. You don't have to put a ton. I'm probably gonna put uh, four on the outside and three on the inside. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill these with wood filler, stainable wood filler. do a really good sanding job on this bed because my boys are going to play all over it so I want to make sure that I don't have any slivers in it so I'm going to go through with an 80 grit and then probably 120 and then I'm going to fill it with my filler and then stain it so I can be brave let me catch my breath now I can feel what I'm saying this is stainable wood filler it's like my favorite to use so I'm going to go fill those holes that I put the screws in and then I'm going to wait for it to dry and stain over it Okay, so we waited a full 24 hours before we sanded the filler down. 
but it was just because it was nighttime and I didn't want to come back out at night. And it's really cold, so it's definitely dry now, so I'm gonna go over it really quick and sand it all down. I'm gonna sand it down with 120 grit, and then I'll probably touch it up another time with 220. This is just a rough palette. I have to really be careful about not letting any sliver stick through. So I'm gonna sand it down really good. Any of the spots that look really bad, because I know my boys are gonna be bouncing against this thing and do whatever they want, so. This is my favorite stain, this is Brer Smoke, so. We basically use this on everything that we ever built, except for kitchen tables. So, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. I just touch it with a rag and then rub it in. I don't use a paintbrush, I like using rags, so. I feel the most Take a clean side of your rag, like right here, if it's a little too dark in a spot, and rub it and pull some of the stain off onto the rag, and then it'll lighten it up a little bit. But you don't have to constantly dip the rag and get big clumps of stain. So like if I just barely dip this end right here, for example, and then I start over here, I lightly touch it, and so like that, and then I'll take a clean side and finish rubbing it in. See? It helps you not to make it too dark because you still want the grain to show through, you know? Sanding it down so it's smooth. So that way your stain goes on a lot easier. If it's really rough wood, you've got to get those spots smoother because it's going to be a sucker to make this stick with a rag. Feelings bad 